Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about face-to-face -face networking. You probably hear a lot that you need to network. Well, this is the lecture where you really learn what does that mean? Where do I find networking events? What do I do when I get there? And how do I make the most of it? So that's what we're going to talk about today in face-to-face -face networking. So the first thing is, what is networking? It's this term that kind of gets thrown around and not a lot of people know what it really means. So networking is the practice of building professional relationships with people whom you normally do not come into con and who you normally do not come into everyday contact with. So professional networking is basically going out of your way to meet new people outside of your company, within your company, um, in other fields and other industries. So that way you know other people outside of your area. And when it comes time to, if you need favors or if you need to help other people, you have that network that you can call upon to get things done much more efficiently and quickly. So there's two kinds of networking. There's virtual and face-to-face. -face. So your social media presence is a way of virtually networking. And LinkedIn, of course, is the major networking hub for that front. But then you have face-to-face -face networking. And this involves going to networking events and places where you physically have to go and meet people. And so that's what this lecture is going to be focused on today is the face to face, the physical, I got to go to a networking event type locations. Now there are two kinds of networking events. You have open networking events and closed networking events. Open networking events are ones where basically you get put into a room with a bunch of people you don't know and you go out and you meet them. There isn't uh, any kind of program that, you know, oh, you're going to get to meet everyone here in a second, you know, through like this little activity or something like that. It's just everyone's for themselves. And it's just like you walk into a room full of people standing around talking. That's an open networking event. A closed one is one that's limited um, either to the public, like only certain people can attend, or there's always some kind of um, program that you have to follow through on so you know maybe it's like a conference or something like that where you know there isn't really a time to where you just get to meet everyone but there's maybe a procedure by which that happens okay so there are six reasons to network okay so people tell you you need to network and i'm sure there are people who even are in their mid-career who maybe haven't done a lot of networking and maybe think that it's not necessary okay the hardest part about teaching networking usually is convincing people that they need to do it. Okay. And I can attest to this personally that everywhere where I've networked, I've had opportunities to pick up new clients who I've never met to meet new people in different industries, which has been nice when I've needed things done. And it's also been a great way to contribute to other people's professional growth because it feels good to give back to other people. And so it's just, it's hard. It's almost immeasurable how much networking can enhance your career. And other people who network will tell you this, that it's nice to have someone only a simple phone call or email away, rather than having to go through bureaucratic means, rather than having to um, be an anonymous stranger. There's just, networking gets its power and it's its potential. So here are some reasons to network. Number one, you get referrals for job opportunities. So remember, the two highest percentage shots on the job market are recruiters and referrals. You pick up recruiters through usually social media, so LinkedIn, posting your resume online. You get referrals by knowing people. So the way to get to know people and to meet new people is to go to networking events. So that's where you get referrals. Your network's also your best long-term um, unemployment insurance because some people are so well networked that if they lose their job they know people who would love to hire them right away so all they have to do is just call somebody and say hey I'm, I'm gonna probably be leaving my company soon okay go, go ahead come work for us you know that kind of thing so your network is kind of like your padding if you will for a fall and you can go to these people people that you know and they can help you Networking is also good. If you're in a field where you need clients, networking. I picked up so many clients through networking. It wasn't through online. It wasn't through, you know, um, just posting ads. It was just I was at a networking event and I met somebody who was looking for a job. So you just, you take advantage of these things. Then you increase your value to the company. 
The reason is because if you know a lot of people in different industries, well, let's say your company needs to wants to do some kind of initiative and you have this idea, well, we can get these other companies involved or these other uh, stakeholders involved and then we can make it even better. Well, how are we going to get a hold of these other stakeholders? Your manager might ask. Well, I know them. I know them personally. I can call them. Now you're more valuable to the company. Now you're harder to fire because not only are they going to be having to terminate you, they have to terminate your entire network. That's hard to do when you have a good network. Networking is also good for your social life. You can make friends. If you relocate to a new city, which I'm sure some of you will after you graduate, then one of the best places to meet people who are like-minded, who will be young professionals like you, will be at networking events. So I made several friends through networking as well. So it's good for that. And the best part, I think, is you get to contribute to other people's career success. So it just feels good like when you can help somebody get something done, whether it's like, you know, hey, uh, I'm looking for a job. Do you know anybody? Oh, actually I do. And then it's kind of like you're two, it's like you're hooking up two friends, you know, like you're setting up your two friends and they go on a date and it works out and you feel really good. Like, haha, they're together because of me. Woo. You know, that kind of thing. Get that feeling. Same thing. Or helping somebody with a volunteer thing. There's just ways to give back. And, it, and it's like the giving back is almost the best part of the networking. So, and if those reasons aren't compelling enough for employment reasons, you should network or don't work. So Forbes magazine estimates 80% of hires are done through the hidden job market. So what's the hidden job market? The hidden job market is basically job vacancies that aren't posted publicly. So these aren't jobs that you can find on monster.com or career builder or wherever, or any job board. Um, and so they either get filled by recruiters. So what the company does is they contract a recruiting firm and the recruiters have the job postings and then they go and look for people who meet these postings. Okay, or they're filled by people who impress employers enough, maybe at a networking event or through some serendipitous moment to where the employer really likes them and is like, we'll make a job for you. We'll create a vacancy for your skills because we can use you. Okay, so that's the hidden job market. And you need to tap into this, not through the traditional job searching ways of, oh, let's apply for several jobs online. You got to tap into this through your LinkedIn and through your networking. Now, there are three frameworks of networking. A lot of people think of networking as getting something. So I go to network, you know, to get things, to get clients, to, you know, me, me stuff, you know, to get me stuff. Okay. That's what a lot of people think networking is. So then they think networking is all about, um, you know, using people and being manipulative and all of that. Now, to some degree, I mean, we're all going to have some kind of interest in networking that's personal, but a lot of times in networking, you um, will help somebody and they'll help you. Okay. Like sometimes it's a tit for tat type thing. Sometimes you're going to feel like you're going to want to help somebody. Okay. And you're not getting anything out of it. So getting something isn't the main purpose. And if you're trying to be that person, like who goes to networking events and all you're doing is looking for clients and you're just keep promoting your company, people aren't going to want to hang around you at networking events because you're just trying to sell them. So it's not the best framework to go. You don't want to measure your networking success by how much you're getting from it. Okay. So some people think of networking then as trading something. Well, it's okay to try to get other people to do things as long as I do something for them. So it's a trade. Okay. And sometimes that will happen. Sometimes you know, you'll arrange something with somebody to where, yeah, I'll help you get this. You help me get that. And that's fine. Um, but again, it's like, sometimes you're not going to feel like you need to do something for them. Or sometimes somebody's not going to feel like they need to do something for you. So I don't like to think of it as trading something either. Um, cause sometimes there's not going to be an even trade. If you're helping somebody find a job, sometimes there's nothing that they can really do to help you as a result. Cause they're unemployed. So what I like to think of networking as is education. Okay. And this is straight out of a book. If you're really interested, it's called making your context count. I really like the philosophy of, of, of that kind of networking. And basically when you're educating, what you're doing is you're educating people about who you are and, um, what you can do for others. Okay. So the way you measure your success in networking is, did I educate people? 
and did I learn about other people, okay? So do people know more about me and do I know more about them? Because then you're in a position where people know who you are and you know other people so you can help other people down the road. So networking is kind of like Buddhism, like it's kind of like being part of a community and like asking the universe for things and karma, right? When you do good things for other people, like the karma comes back and good things happen to you. Like a lot of that stuff is true when it comes to networking. So let's look at some places where you can find networking events. So first off, since you all will be college graduates, you all will become young professionals. So, you know, young professional organizations, and here's a list, you know, Jonesboro, Make-A-Wish, Young Nonprofit Professionals Network. So some of them are local. So when whatever city you move to, you just need to look in that city's um, chamber of commerce, perhaps, or just look at some websites in that city, Google Young Professionals Networks, um, and see what comes up that's local to your city. The young, non the young Nonprofit Professionals Network is national, so there's those as well. Then you have business networking organizations like Network After Work. That was one of my favorites in Kansas City. So Network After Work, you know, is usually, um, it's like $10 for a ticket and you just go to a bar and you network from like, you know, 5.30 to 7.30 or 8 o'clock p.m. Pretty good. And then you just meet tons of people from different organizations and industries. It's always a good time. Then you have things like BNI and RLI. And these are more like referral networks where like you have to, um, you become part of a referral network and a referral network is basically if you ever have clients or customers who um, need something that you don't provide, there should be, there will be somebody else in your network that you should refer them to. And the other people in the network will do the same for you. Okay. So if you're doing freelance graphic design and you have a client and you know, your client's like, you know, I really need my roofing done. Well then, what you need to do is refer to the person in your referral network. Well, you should go to this guy's roofing. He's really good, okay? And um, they'll have some requirements about what you need to do to be active in the referral network and to make sure you're not mooching, okay? But that's what that is. And then also your local chamber of commerce will have things. You can also look at your industry organization website. So remember, no matter what your job is, there is probably a national industry organization for it. It doesn't matter if you're administrative assistant, sales, graphic designer, public relations, it doesn't matter. There's gonna be an industry organization. So what you wanna do is you want to find out what yours is and see what kind of networking events they have for your organization. Then there are job clubs, okay? Job clubs are basically clubs comprised of job seekers. And what they do is they usually meet on like a weekly basis. And what they do is they basically just support each other through their job search. A lot of times they're ran by a career coach of some kind. And so they'll, what they'll do is they'll talk about openings that they've found. They'll, they'll look at each other's resumes. They'll give each other interviewing tips. And it's kind of like a lookout group and support group for job seekers, okay? Now you can find job clubs in various ways. So like Kansas City had kcjobclub.com if you live in that area. Um, you can probably find local ones through your local career center. So you should have like a county or state career center in your state wherever you live. See if they have one. Churches also, also often have job clubs, so you don't have to be religious to be part of them, but you just, you know, churches will have them, so look into that. And then community centers. Check out your community center, your local community center. They might have some kind of job club going. Then you have job fairs. Job fairs are basically um, events where employers all come together and advertise jobs in person. And then all the job seekers show up and you basically get to meet employers face to face. It's a way to skip the whole online thing and just put a name to a face. Okay. Now job fairs can have mixed results, you know, like sometimes everybody and their mom shows up for a job fair and it takes forever just to talk to one person because you have to wait in line. Um, sometimes they're really good and they're small and they're well ran. So the idea is that they're really good to go to because at the very least you get to practice interviewing and you get to practice selling yourself in person. And who knows when you hand them your resume, they might really like you and they'll call you back just on that alone. If you make a good enough impression. So you can find job fairs through websites. So like Kansas city at the KC job Then you have newspaper classified. So check your newspaper, the university that you go to, so Arkansas state for all my students, they have job fairs, okay? So you need to pay attention to the Career Center because they'll tell you about those. And then of course your local 
Career Center should have them too if you're in a municipal area. Then you have alumni events. So all of you who graduate from Arkansas State will be an Arc State alum. And depending, I'm not, how, I'm not sure how good the alumni network is here, but if it's national, then even if you live in another state, you know, North Carolina or something, there might be an Arc State Alumni Association there. And they'll have networking events just for alumni. And that's great because then you already have something in common with people. Now, this is what an open networking event will look like. You literally just walk into a room and people are just talking to each other, okay? And everyone's kind of circled up. Everyone will kind of have a name tag here. Everyone will be dressed up. Um, usually it's small plate food if you have food at all, but usually just drinks is all you need. I would never go to a networking event to eat like a full meal. Like I would focus on maybe having a drink, especially if you get a drink ticket, a light drink, and um, keep your hands free otherwise. But yeah, when you first walk into a networking event, it's, it's going to feel like um, like those movies where like the, the kid moves in, like there's a new kid in high school and like he's all alone and stuff. And then he walks into the lunchroom and, you know, there's all these people sitting at their tables and he doesn't know where to sit. So he sits by himself with his lunch tray. OK, so that's what it might feel like the first time you go to a networking event. I still remember my first networking event and it was like, whoa, what do I do? OK, but once you get comfortable and this is where I'm going to explain, like, here's what you do at a networking event. It'll feel like jumping into a pool where it's like, oh, this is nothing. OK, and you just. You'll learn to just dive right in and, and start meeting people and hanging out and making connections. So the first thing is let's kind of make some distinctions then between partying and networking. OK, so um, th these are, you know, general things that I've noticed with partying and networking. So here we go. Um, when you go to a party or a bar, you usually go with people, right? You don't usually go to a bar by yourself or a party by yourself or you go to a club by yourself, that kind of thing. But at a networking event, you can and should go by yourself, okay? So, um, you know, don't feel like I can't go to a networking event because I don't have anyone to go with. Well, that's not the point of networking events. You can go by yourself. It's perfectly fine because everyone's there for professional reasons, not social reasons. Also, at a, at a, at a network or a party, um, you tend to stick to who you know, or like when you go to the bar or whoever, versus at a networking event, everyone's trying to mingle. So everyone's trying to meet as many people as possible. So you might start off talking to like two or three people, but then you all will separate and then you'll all go different directions and meet two or three other new people. You see what I mean? So it's, it's a very quick mingling type thing where you're not necessarily sticking to one group the whole time. And if you are, um, it's kind of it's kind of a strange thing, right? Because now you're missing out on all these other opportunities to meet new people. Uh, usually, when you go out, you know there's an emphasis on eating and drinking. Um, networking events, you're very light on those things. Even when they have food, you're very light on it, and on, you're definitely light on the drinking as well. At the bar, you know you can have fun, personal conversation, talk about whatever, talk about gross things, funny things, you know, whatever you want. But um, at a networking event, you try to keep the topics professional, right? So you don't talk about politics, you don't talk about religion, you know, you don't talk about gross things, that kind of thing. You're generally trying to make a good impression because you're technically around other people, other professionals. And usually at a bar, you know, you're just enjoying the night, you know, enjoying the connections, seeing what the night will bring, you're having a good time, you're sticking to your friends. Um, but here at networking events, you're here to educate. You're here to get something done. You're trying to make a good impression. You're trying to learn about people. You're trying to let people learn about you as well. Okay. So it's a very different mentality. It's a much more task oriented form of socializing. Okay. So if you do go with friends to a networking event, what you need to do is you need to tell your friends before you go in that like, okay, we can hang out for like the first five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. But then after that, we're going to separate because if you go to a networking event with your friends and you never leave your friends and you just sit there like in your own little isolated place, there's not you're not really doing much good. Right. So make that arrangement and go out and mingle. <clears throat> so how do you prepare for open networking events? So the first thing is you need to prepare for the three most common kinds of questions that you'll hear at networking events. What's your name? What do you do? And this is more of an implicit question, but what are we going to talk about, right? Like with that, okay, so now that we've talked about what you're going to do, what's next? You also want to set goals, okay? So what do you want to do, which is to educate and to learn about people, and you want to pack a business card. So the one thing you want to bring to networking events is business cards, because the way people share contact information isn't writing it on a napkin. This isn't the 1990s, you know, or the 80s. Uh, people hand out business cards. That's the professional way of doing it, okay? 
So we'll, I'll have a slide on business cards here later. So the first question, what is your name? So in making your contacts count, um, the name is not a formality before the good stuff. It is the good stuff. Okay. Remembering people's names is one of the most impactful things you can do in impression management, especially when you've met somebody before and you're going to have to meet them again. Okay. Makes them feel special when you remember. The problem is, it's just that when we first introduce with people, we only spend like two seconds on names. So usually it's like, oh, hi, how are you? Good. My name's Daniel. What's yours? Sarah. Okay. Nice to meet you, Sarah. Then you go on to your next thing. Then five minutes later, you're like, okay, well, uh, it was nice meeting you. Oh, what was your name? You know, that thing. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to try to teach our name and we want to try to learn the other person's name to teach your name. There's different ways you can do this. One, one uh, way is to use your first and last name. Cause at least at that, at that point, they have at least two chances to remember you either remember your first name or they remember your last name. Um, you can repeat your name if possible. So I can say, Hey, my name is Daniel, Daniel, you Sarah. Nice to meet you there. I've said it at least twice and that way there's two chances for them to remember, or you can give uh, a memorable device. So, you know, for my last name, you Sarah, um, I can say Daniel, like you, Sarah, you know, like you, Sarah, or I would tell a story of my brother. He used to call himself Tony, me, Sarah. Okay. So, um, little stories there that can help people remember your name. So you'll have to think of these because I don't know your name um, and try to figure out what's a good way to teach people my name that makes it memorable. Okay. Um, whether it's like a movie reference, a quote reference, uh, uh, usually a lot of people like to use celebrities as long as they're decent upstanding celebrities, right? So that's one way to do it. Or if there's some way of spelling it that you can teach it, uh, it's Caitlin with a C, you know, or something like that. That's a way to help people visualize it give something to help people remember then to remember their name. You want to try to repeat their name when possible. So, uh, so what's your name, Sarah? Well, nice to meet you, Sarah, you know, and then throughout the conversation, keep saying it. So then it becomes reinforced like saying it strategically. Um, you can ask to repeat part of it too. So, uh, Sarah, what was that again? You know, Sarah, what? And like last name, or you can ask about the name theirself, the story behind their name. That's always a good conversation icebreaker. So what's the story behind your name, Sarah? And then you can kind of like learn it that way. So, or you can ask about the spelling. You can ask about the, the origination of where it came from. So there's a lot of ways you can make the name itself a conversation topic. And by having that conversation topic, you'll remember it, you see, and it's a little bit less boring than the next question, which is usually, what do you do? Which is the next question. What do you do? So what we're preparing for here is if you're a job seeker, okay? Cause a lot of times people will say, I don't want to go to networking events cause I don't have a job. I don't want to be the, the, the person without a job, the unemployed person. Well, people of all employment levels go to uh, networking events. College students can go to networking events. And I have seen college students at networking events before I've seen unemployed people. I've seen employed people. I've seen high level people, you know, entry level people. I mean, you get the whole gamut at networking events. So when people ask you, what do you do? Cause that's probably gonna be the second question they ask you. They're asking you, what's your name and what do you do? Because this is the time where they figure out, okay, what's your relation to me professionally. Okay. So there's two approaches. One way is to emphasize your abilities or previous accomplishments rather than a title. So basically talk about your past and what you've done in the past because the past shapes who you are. And that's essentially your job title. So you can say something like, well, I've worked in insurance the past 10 years and help people save their property and money. Now I'm looking for a new career in sales, something like that. So just a little quick tagline that just kind of summarizes. Here's where I've been. Okay. This, this is the skill set that I have because essentially that's what people are asking when they, people ask you in general, like this doesn't even have to be a networking event, just in general, like when you're at the store, what do you do? What do you do for a living? What people want to know is what do you spend most of your time doing? Um, using what skills? Okay. What are you skilled at? What are you good at? You know, and what do you spend most of your time doing? That's what, what do you do covers? So that's what you're doing. Or you can just give yourself a title. Okay. Like there's no rule saying you can't give yourself one. If you're unemployed, you're a professional still. So you can say I'm a warehouse management professional seeking employment. Um, if you're a student, I'm a public relations and marketing major at a state expecting to graduate in May. So you just don't want to say I'm a student because student is so vague, but you can just say I'm a PR student. 
okay, now I know. Okay, so your skills are going to be PR. Great. Okay. So these are very simple, um, very realistic answers that you can give when people ask you, what do you do? And nobody's going to be like, what? You're just a student. What are you doing here? You know, that kind of thing. Mostly, if you come to a networking event and you say you're a student, people are like, oh, wow, that's awesome you're here because you're, you're getting ahead of the game. This is good. Okay, you're going to get praised for being a student at a networking event. So it's not people are going to shun you. It's people are going to praise you for thinking so smartly about your career. So do it. Okay, then the third question, remember, it's kind of an implicit question. It's not, okay, so what are we going to talk about? But it's just kind of like that silence. So like what happens is you have the name part. Then you have the what do you do part, and then depending on the answer to what do you do, then you might have silence, right? Like that awkward, like, okay, so what do we talk about? Because sometimes people like work jobs that you don't have anything to do with or you know nothing about, okay? So this is the part three. There's two things you can do. You can teach about you. So talk about some things that are related to your professional field, like your attributes, abilities. I always talk about articles that I read, so I try to read some interesting articles on LinkedIn or on the news that aren't like controversial. And I talk about what I read, you know? So I'll be just be like, oh, you know, I was, so I was reading on LinkedIn today. Uh, this guy did a video about how to do Skype interviews and it was pretty cool because he talked about, and see that gives people something to respond to. You see what I mean? You can talk about what brought you to the networking event, you know? So yeah, this is the, I came to this networking event today. I'm trying to meet new people. It's just been so good to finally get to do that. Something like that, you know? Um, you can offer assistance if people are talking about, um, something about needing help with something, you know, you can do that. So if somebody says, oh, I'm a, I'm a caseworker for child protective services. Oh, well, if you need something with, uh, you know, help getting students from point A to point B, let me know, you know, something like that. If you're on the job market, talk about your job search, you know? So that's so cool that you're employed. Yeah, I've, I've been on the job market now for, for uh, two weeks and I've really seen some interesting postings. What have you thought about blah, blah? You know, you can kind of do that thing. Um, you can learn about them, ask about their occupation, their story behind it, you know, what got them interested in that job and what have they, what have they liked about it, that kind of thing. Um, you don't use it as a time to make people work. So like if you meet a lawyer at a, at a networking event, you probably don't want to be asking them legal advice because you know, they're not on the clock, right? You're not paying them. So it's that kind of thing. Um, you can ask them what brings them to the event, talk about opportunities that they're looking for. Um, and people like to give job search advice I've learned. So if you're on the job market, why don't you ask people, ask people, you know, hey, I'm on the job market. What have, what have you learned from being on the job market or how did you find your job and what, if, what, what do you think is important, blah, 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 that kind of thing. Because you never know, they might refer you to somebody who they know is hiring. Okay, so what do you do when you arrive? First off, you'll probably get a name tag. Most networking events are given a name tag. So that's also nice on the name part because then you can visualize it if you look there at the name tag. Usually what I do when I first go to a networking event is I look for people I already know and I greet them first. That way nobody gets mad. You were at a networking event. You didn't say hi, you know, that kind of thing. So I try to get that out of the way. Um, well, not out of the way, but you know what I mean. Uh, I try to take care of that first. And what's also nice about that is then I'm getting warmed up, you know, because if I'm kind of like, oh, I just got off work and I'm like, uh, you know, but like that helps me lighten my mood more. So then I'll be more happy to meet new people. Then once you've done that, then it's time to meet new people. Okay, so how do you do that? Um, the best way to start is there's usually a lot of new people at a networking event, and you'll see serial networkers, like people who go to every networking event, and you'll just keep running into them, and there's nothing wrong with that, and that's just good. They're thinking ahead, and so it's always good to greet them too, but a lot of times you'll see new people, first-timers, and so they're always kind of like maybe the, they might be the awkward ones who like don't know what to do at networking events because they didn't take this class. So what you can do is just, if you see somebody standing by themselves, go up and go up to them and greet them. Okay. Cause what, 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 what else do they got going on? They're just standing there. Okay. So go ahead and greet them, introduce yourself, you know, get them warmed up, get them, get them attuned to what's going on. And that's cool. Um, what you can also do is enter existing groups. And what, what I should say before I get into this a little bit more, when you greet that person who's standing by himself or herself or whatever, a lot of times what'll happen in networking events, and this is pretty much true at all of them, I think, um, groups shift really fast. So you might be sitting there talking to this person by yourself and then randomly another person will join your conversation. So you'll just be sitting there talking, then somebody will join. And then there'll be the three of you talking, you know, going through the motions or whatever. Then a fourth person will join. And the next thing you know, there's like seven people in your group and you, you, you just stood there the whole time talking to one person. Okay, so networking events will be like that, where the, group, the groups are constantly shifting. 
So at that point, if you feel like, okay, I don't want to be here anymore in this little group, you just excuse yourself and you leave the person and the other group of six people there and move on to the next group. Now, here's how you enter existing groups. There's three ways you can do it, because I know it can be awkward, because what happens is people circle up, usually, when they're talking in groups. When they get to groups of three or more, people tend to form these circles, and then you feel like, how do I get into the circle, you know, like that kind of thing, and people might feel weird, like, how do I, I don't know, but they're all circled up, you know, that kind of thing. One way you can do it is you can inch in, just kind of inch your way in, and just wait for people to acknowledge you, you know. Usually people, when they're being polite and nice, they'll, um, You'll kind of enter the circle, and then eventually, when they hit when they hit a pause in the conversation, they'll say, "Oh, hey, blah blah blah," that kind of thing. Or you just wait for that pause and acknowledge yourself. Uh, let's see. You can just jump in. Like if you just hear people talking about something you know a lot about, just start talking, okay? And say, "Oh, that's cool. You guys are talking about that." By the way, blah 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 blah, and then blah 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 blah, and then say, "Oh, by the way, my name is Dan. What's what's your old name?" Okay, so cool. And then get into it, okay? So you just jump in. And remember, it's perfectly acceptable in networking events to shift groups, to join random strangers. That's the whole point of the activity, okay? There's a third way to do this, but see, people do this wrong and it makes me mad, okay? Um, it's called interrupt, introduce, and inquire. So a lot of times um, I'll be talking to somebody. Um, well, not all, a lot of times, but sometimes I'll be talking to somebody and we're having a really good conversation, okay? And maybe we're talking about something important and then just randomly, like just out of nowhere, somebody just joins our conversation and uh, completely interrupts and then just starts talking about whatever they want to talk about. So like I'll be talking, we'll be talking, and then some person, oh, hey, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so then we lose our conversation topic and then now we have to take care of this other person. And then it just makes me mad, right? Because like they didn't even like, you know, sit to see what was going on. They just started talking. So... If you're gonna to have to do this, because sometimes you might have to, okay? You might have to interrupt the conversation to you know, get in, to inch in. What you wanna do is you wanna interrupt and say, oh, hey, okay? And introduce yourself, my name's Daniel, blah, 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 Daniel, Sarah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, say your little opening and then say, okay, um, sorry, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you all. What were you all talking about, okay? That's the inquire. So inquire is, what were you all talking about? You know, or was I interrupting something, something like that? Because then what you get to do, what that does is that allows the two people to decide, is this an important topic, you know, or do they want to keep talking about this thing that they're talking about? Um, and then they can make a decision as to, oh, you know, uh, yeah, actually, we're talking about contracts for this company. Oh, OK, well, then I'll leave you two alone. That kind of thing. You can you can exit and it's perfectly fine. But if, you know, one person thinks it's important, and the other person doesn't, the person can be like, you know, Oh, no, we're just talking about, you know, contract stuff. It's not a big deal. So anyways, what, what do you think about this? You know, um, so then they can change the topic. So and then in that case, you're a savior, right? Because now you've stopped a boring conversation. You've brought in fresh new life, new perspective. Now people like you because you're the new, um, you're the new person. Okay. So these are things that are hard to coach abstractly. You just have to go to networking events and see these things for yourself. But that's how that works. Then you want to provide business cards. Remember, business cards are standard business. Um, contact information exchange. So you can get really cheap business cards, 500 for nine for 10 bucks at Vistaprint. I go to moo.com. I mean, there's pretty good too. But clearly what you want to have is your name. You want to have a branding statement of some kind that says who you are. Like, are you a student? Are you a public relations person, graphic designer, whatever. Address, city and state, phone number. You want a professional email address just like the resume, and you want to have a website on there too. And you want it to look nice. You want it to look professional, and you want to make sure that um, it conveys the brand that you want. Now, after the networking event is over, the next, you know, you can do it that evening or the next morning. I used to do it the next morning. You want to do all your follow through. So you want to call or email your contacts, the ones that you think are important, uh, in the next 24 hours. So here's the thing. Here's what's going to happen. You go to a networking event, you're going to get a bunch of business cards from people like and some of the business cards are going to be meaningful to you because like you actually sat and talked to this person and you've prospected something with them. But then you're going to have these things called cardboard connections where somebody just hands you their business card because they can. Uh, real estate agents do this. Insurance agents do this. I mean, a lot of people do this where they just literally like I've had I've seen people do this where they just come up to you and they say, hi, my name is my name is Jake, Jake Stepper. If you need a house, let me know. And they just hand me their Christmas, their, their business card. And I'm like, OK, <laughs> you know, like I don't need a house. So, um, you know, 
you're gonna have some of those. So what you have to do is it's like it's like playing cards. You have to like, okay, so here's this business card. Who is this person? Okay, gotcha. I need to contact this person. This person, I don't care about them. Okay, uh, well, no, but you know, but you just kind of like, well, this person's not as important. It was just a real estate agent, that kind of thing. Okay. Now the people you follow through with, um, you want to call or email them uh, if you said that you were gonna do something. Okay. Because here's the thing. At networking events, people want to seem resourceful. So a lot of times people will say they're going to do something for you just to seem resourceful because it's cool. Um, but then they never do it because either because they forget or because they were just saying it. Um, and sometimes you might do the same thing. You might say, oh, yeah, I'll send you that article about this, this, and this. Or I'll, I'll hook you up with this, with this person that I know who can tell you more about this, this, and this. And then it never gets done. So follow through is what makes it real, right? So like the networking event is like the night, uh, the night of, but then the next day is like this is where it becomes concrete, okay? So you want to call or email your contact next 24 hours. So you want to give them a subtle reminder of who you are. So just, and you know, hey, Chris, it was great meeting at the networking event yesterday. It was really good. We got to discuss um, your future in sales. Uh, attached is the, the, the job posting that I would think you would be a really good fit for. Uh, you talked about wanting this, that. Okay, so fulfill what you said you'd do. Um, so yeah, uh, let me know what you think of that job posting. And by the way, uh, I'll look forward to the contact you have at... Uh, Sunday Sweets candy store for uh, management pop, uh, possibilities, okay? So what you want to do is remind them who you are, do your end of things, and then if there's anything they're supposed to do, subtly remind them of what they're supposed to follow through on, okay? So you try to do it in a polite way because they, they, they haven't necessarily had enough time to do whatever it is that you said they said they were going to do, but you just want to remind them so that they don't forget. So the follow through is what makes it real. And what you should also do for the people who you don't need to contact, but you just want to keep in touch with, you know what I mean? Just add them on LinkedIn. LinkedIn is a good way to solidify a lot of your face-to-face -face networking into something that you can maintain long-term. Because then when they post updates or if you ever need to get a hold of them, you can send them a message on LinkedIn and it works fine. And then anytime they have a birthday or anything, it's good to like, you know, say happy birthday those kinds of things. Use marked occasions as a way to keep a lot of your contacts fresh. The other thing we need to talk about is informational interviews, because I feel like we can't do a professional seminar class and then not talk about informational interviews. So informational interviews are meetings initiated by you with an individual who has experience or knowledge in your career area of interest. Okay. So basically an informational interview is I'm going to interview somebody as a job seeker who is currently working in my field to learn more about how to get into my field, okay? They're good because number one, they get you in contact with someone who might know of openings or they can become a referral for you if you were to apply at that company. You'll get industry specific advice for finding employment. So that's another nice thing is that this is somebody who actually works in the field that you're trying to get into. And you'll have a business contact. So you add them to your LinkedIn. They can become a mentor to you, potentially. And you can use informational interviews to learn about how to get into the industry in general. Or if you're on LinkedIn, let's say there's a company you're really interested in. You could interview, do an informational interview with an employee there now and ask them questions about the company. Okay, so do an informational interview about life working at that company. What's the culture like? How'd you get into this position, such and such? And then once you've done the informational interview, you could potentially put them down as a referral. Um, they can look at your resume and they can be your key to getting in at that company when it's time to apply, okay? So the informational interview is actually incredibly useful. So you can do it with anyone who's employed, an expert or someone well networked in your industry. And informational interviews can be done through networking events. So if you meet somebody who works at a company you really wanna work at, what you can do is you can say, you know, at the networking event, hey, I'd really like to learn more about working for the company that you work at because I think it'd be a great place to work um, from what I'm hearing. Do you have some time? Maybe uh, sometime next week we can get coffee or something and talk more about this company and what it's like to be there because I'd like to learn from you and hear what you have to say. You know, something like that. And that can be an informational interview, okay? Or you can do the cold contact. You know, I have my students do career papers where they have to, um, in my business professional class, and they have to call somebody who works in their field and talk to them. And so people are very happy to talk about these things. It's quite amazing the feedback I get from students when they say like, yeah, I, 
I just randomly called this one person and he was totally happy to talk about his job and blah, blah, blah. Like people like being in that, that position of power or that expert seat, if you will. So yeah, I mean, don't be afraid to cold call. It's a good skill to have anyways. So what do informational interviews look like? You are the interviewer. So you got to come with the questions, okay? Because you're going to be the one interviewing them. You want to show up 10 to 15 minutes early as if you were the interviewee, because remember, they are donating their time to you. And you still do a thank you letter in your informational interview because they did donate their time. And you really don't want them to last more than 15, 30 minutes, but you know, ultimately be respectful of the interviewee's time. Now, what I've heard of happening is like, okay, you set aside 30 minutes, but the interviewee just loves this whole thing so much that they'll go, the, you know, you'll look at the clock like, okay, well, I don't want to take any more time. Oh no, it's all fine, fine, fine. You know, and then the next thing you know, you take an hour and a half and they're completely cool with it. Um, so, you know, just be respectful. I mean, be respectful of their time and recognize that they are donating. They could be doing something else other than talking to you, but here they are talking to you, okay? Not because you're a bad person, but just because, you know, people are busy. And usually the recommendation is that you try to meet at a networking event or outside of company time, because, you know, if you try to do it during the work hours, you know, that might be a risk for them because then they're not working and being productive. So usually, you know, do a lunch or you can do a coffee after hours, something like that. Something where it's informal and you can be respectful of their company's time too. So here's a list of different questions you can ask. I mean, these aren't the, these aren't the only questions, but these are just to give you some ideas as to what types of informational interview questions would look like. So um, feel free to pause the video and read through these if you want. But overall, you gotta know what you give and you gotta know what you want, okay? You gotta know the value you add and the value that you seek, okay? And so networking is all about knowing it and communicating it. Networking is also about building its relation, building relationships. And I swear, the power of networking is in its potential. So you might go to your first networking event and you'll leave with a bunch of business cards and you'll just be like, but I still don't have a job, so what was the point? It's all about the potential, right? You've put yourself out there to potentially meet employers, referrals, to grow your network. And uh, who knows when that will all come to fruition, okay? So it's not one of those things where it's like a short-term thing. Networking is like farming. It takes a while to, to really start benefiting from it. Um, but the more you contribute to helping other people and the more you go to networking events, the greater your yield will be down the road, okay? Remember that recruiters and referrals are the highest percentage shots of applications. You get recruiters online, but you can meet them at networking events. Recruiters do go to networking events. So if you're having trouble getting them online, go to networking events. And referrals, definitely networking events. So overall, I hope this gives you a lot of good reasons to be excited about networking. And if you have any questions about how to prepare or do well at interviews or informational interviews or at networking events, feel free to email me or tweet at me. Good luck to you.